Hey everybody, this is Nelson Everhart. I'm back with another video in the Wizard 101 Musical Tour of the Spiral. This week is a special treat because I am not sure that anybody has heard this track before, uh, or at least this version of the track. This is how the story goes. So I usually compose a rough version of the track that has just enough detail to let the developers of King's Isle know kind of what my intentions are. They can feed back to me more of this, less of that, and then I can polish it up. For this particular track, it seems like what happened was they never replaced the rough track. Usually I send them the final, they replace all those tracks, but that might not have happened this time. So hopefully this is interesting. Uh, I have contacted developers about it, so by the time you hear this, they very may well have fixed it. This is from Zafaria. This is the ninth world in the spiral, and check it out. And there's a loop. So all these tracks are me singing. Uh, once again, be nice. <laughs> it's mildly terrifying uh, soloing your tracks in front of the whole world. But you now when I'm doing vocals like this, I, I, I'm i layering. I'm singing one part at a time. So I'm building these harmonies. Uh, and I, I usually can hear, I know what chords I'm playing. I usually can hear just what you know harmony uh, needs to go on. And I usually build it from the bottom up. So these are the first voices that I would probably hear. And I usually at, at least double, sometimes triple each voice. So the bass part, you know, has two voices on it. The tenor part has two voices on it. And sometimes like this, I, I build it all the way up to, you know, 10 or 11 tracks as I've got here. Now, obviously, Zafar is based on largely African culture. African music usually relies uh, on more percussive complexity and, and different time signatures and different grooves. And the, the harmony is relatively simple. So the, the choir here is singing mostly just three part chords. And I wanted to have an actual language that Zafarian was based on. Um, so I chose Swahili, which is a really neat language, especially to sing and very lyrical in a percussive way. So I've got a couple of phrases in here that I kind of based on Swahili. I, again, it's, it's a fictional world. So if my Swahili uh, pronunciation isn't perfect, then it's not because uh, I, I mispronounced it. It's because it's a fictional language and, and it varies from Swahili in the fictional world. So here are the first two lower tracks here. Uh, 
yeah, drifting flat there. <laughs> but again, it's not, it's not the sound of any individual track. It's what it sounds like when you put it all together. So that's the, the very lowest line. Here's the next. Uh, yeah. Next voices. So we're kind of building up the chord like that. And the next two voices. And the top two. You know, writing for a choir is something I don't get to do an awful lot. And I really do enjoy singing and kind of building building up these parts and hearing something kind of pop out that wasn't there before. So what they're saying here is uh, Ya Caribou um, Zafaria. Caribou means welcome. So this being kind of the hub piece to Zafaria, uh, I felt that was pretty appropriate. Yeah, and other things you can do with vocals, it's just, it's easier to put little ornaments in there. So uh, I, I probably here started singing. There's a part there that kind of did a little turn on one of the parts. Uh, the lyrics here are Tucheze Ngoma, which it's it's taken from a Swahili phrase that, that means hang my hips and dance. Just another little phrase to kind of get into the spirit of, you know, starting this, you know, to start exploring here. And then right here, I took the uh, Tucheze and Goma uh, lyrics and I kind of built it up. And you can, you can see it literally building up here where we've, you know, it starts just in the lower voices and it kind of adds more and more and more and more voices. This is a technique that I really like doing. It's singing a rhythmic phrase across the bar lines. You can actually see here that most of this tune is in 7-8, uh, which means it's it's based on bars of seven beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this rhythmic phrase, Tucheze and Goma, only takes this much time to say. Right, and then we start saying it again right here. So this is the whole bar, but it only takes us this much of it to to finish saying and then we start the new phrase over here and it only takes us to here so it's constantly uh where the the rhythm of the lyrics is is constantly shifting in the bar i'll play the other tracks just so you can hear where we are rhythmically in the bar <laughs> so that's uh, a lot about my approach to the vocal stuff i'm, I'm using a relatively famous uh, African instrument called a kalimba. There's there's a lot of different names for it. Some people call it a thumb piano, but these little tines, these you know pieces of metal, you pluck them and it can be with your thumbs, but it can also be with other fingers. It, it's a pretty unique uh, instrument. There's not a, to my knowledge, there's not a lot of analogs in the music of different cultures, but it's got a very nice plucky metallophone kind of sound. So other African instruments here, we've got the ngoni, which is a stringed instrument, kind of like a guitar, but it's the body's made of wood and then it's got like a dried uh, goat skin or other animal skin kind of wrapped around the outside of it. And that gives it like a, a pretty interesting uh, kind of resonating body. Kind of a, a twangy harp with less sustain. Uh, there's also the Kora, which is relatively similar in sound to the Ngone. Um, it's the same kind of idea. It's a, you know, long stick neck, yeah, although the body's a little less oblong and more round. And there's a bridge that kind of pops strings off the, off the resonating body there. So it's got a little more of a sustained sound. And they're both playing there, just like the choir. A lot of the approach that I took to this was more about a group of people playing together, not just, you know, one solo instrument usually. So 
So we have two different players really playing the same part there. Columbus working with it. And African music's got a lot of percussion in it, like I said. So here we've got djembes. It's kind of a big goblet-shaped drum with uh, animal hide stretched across the top. Kind of like a conga. Uh, we've also got uh, Awe drums, which I believe is actually more of a style of playing, or it's you know from a particular uh, area of the country rather than a particular instrument. The patch that I used, that's what I called Awe drum ensemble. So I don't know what the individual instruments in this track are called. So with the djembe's together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One. Very common in folk music just to have, you know, uh, there is a part that everybody's playing, but then, you know, you make your own style a little bit by, by adding your own ornamentation and your own style there. Uh, I have this other instrument. I think it's called a genkakwe. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's kind of like a, a couple cowbells or a go-go's. And I think there's there's usually a set of them here. I'm just using this, the smaller of the two. Uh, here it looks like it goes back and forth between them. There you go. The amount of different materials in African music that they make shakers of is pretty amazing. There's just a lot of different types made of different things. These are from an instrument called an aksatse, which is usually a gourd and a, it kind of covered in a net that have shells on them. And when you kind of shake that around and, and scrape it around, you get a little different, uh, you get some different tones in there. And shaker, shaker parts are really difficult to simulate. It seems like it'd be simple, you know, it's, it's a shake. But when you're playing a shaker, you never just shake it one way. You have to move your hand one way away from you and then move it back towards you. So you're shaking it forward and backwards. And each one of those has kind of a different sound. And sometimes there's, there's kind of a big accented shake and sometimes there's a little shake. But to make it sound natural with samples, you really have to experiment with the different, uh, different keys here. So samples mapped to the C are kind of the accent here. Ta ta ka ta ta ka ta ta ka ta. That's in seven, so ta ta ka ta 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 ka ta ta ka ta. And this is more uh, just a string and brass combined sound just playing the chords here. relatively simple harmony there. Uh, I was really trying to let the African instruments and the choir uh, do most of the heavy lifting here and only use the uh, orchestral instruments here to kind of tie it into the Wizard 101 world. I have a choir here backing up the, the live vocal tracks by itself here. This is probably, this is probably uh, what's going on in the rough track that you hear on YouTube. Uh, because, uh, you know, I, I wrote this and said, okay, this is the idea. These are the chords that I want to do, but this is a cheesy choir sound. It sounds so much better when we, when we have the uh, live tracks doing it. Uh So fake. Here at the end, uh, these chords are, are a little more, a little more complicated, uh, a little more kind of Wizard 101 element and less uh, of the African influence. But the kalimba is actually continuing to play through these chords. <laughs> So 
So what I'm finding interesting listening back to this is there's a lot of notes that don't necessarily conform to the chords that are going on. One of the interesting things about the, the kalimba, it doesn't use the uh, Western chromatic scale that we that we normally use. So it might not actually be able to play all the notes in the chord. The beginning of this part that I play doesn't actually conform to the chord change here. And, and I think that actually makes it sound more uh, convincing because maybe they didn't have that note, so they had to stick with this line here, which kind of sounds a little bit off in the harmony, but it just makes it sound a little more convincing, I think. And then we change there. And there's a couple kind of notes in here as as the the player is probably trying to figure out you know exactly how to how to reflect these chord changes when he doesn't have the third of the scale or the or the tonic or whatever that's it for this video feel free to leave a like and leave a comment let me know what else you want to see or you know hey if there's if there's something else you want me to do in a different video series let me know i'll be happy to try and uh, provide that all right thanks everybody bye